Um, look, thanks everybody. Um, many thanks for the very warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be with, here to you, with you here today to talk about the future of work. Uh, and it's fair to, be, to say that it's becoming something of a buzz topic of late. Uh, in fact, predicting what the future of work might look like has become an essential part of corporate planning for most businesses. It isn't just the amount of change that we're seeing in technology, work practices, education and generational outlook. It's also the breadth of changes in human expectations in terms of how we want to work and interact with clients, colleagues, family and the public. And what are we seeing? Well, firstly, work is increasingly about balance. More than in any other time in history, the workplace is starting to adapt to the individual's potential. And for the employees and employers who can get this right, it's a very exciting time. And if we thought there wasn't enough going on, blend this with an unprecedented drive to increase women's participation in the workforce. And the key is that we've really got one chance to get it all right. So today I thought I'd talk to you about a few of the trends I believe we're seeing playing out now, the impact this might have on our workplaces in the future, and I'll share a few of the things that Oricon is doing to understand these trends and make the most of some of the opportunities that they present. For those who haven't heard of us, Oricon is a global engineering and infrastructure advisory company, and as part of our overarching aspiration to be what we term future ready, we've committed to building as much innovation into our workplaces and our practices therein as we include in the solutions and designs that our teams work on each and every day with our clients. So why do we spend so much time thinking about the, what the future might hold? Well, I can remember when I was a young girl, I always wanted to study civil engineering. And it wasn't a common ambition. As Hamilton said, I was one of just two females in my year to graduate with an engineering degree. And that was something back then that was just accepted really as the norm. And now, some 20 years later, we're constantly talking about how do we get more women into STEM and more women into leadership. And I can also remember when the only mention of artificial intelligence was reserved for a good book or the cinematic screen. Star Wars or Star Trek, or perhaps the latest Rise of the Machines apocalyptic craze. And now almost every global company in the world is developing their own strategies to deal with artificial intelligence, along with advances in robotics and machine learning at a rate that was previously unimaginable. So the future tends, up, tends to catch up with us relatively quickly and simply become our current reality. We adapt and we move forward. And yet I'd argue that the sheer volume and pace of change that we're seeing right now is so great that we can't just wait for the future to catch, to, to overtake us. There's an imperative for companies to disrupt rather than wait to be disrupted. And this is particularly important when it comes to the aspiration of achieving far greater gender equality in our workforces. If we don't move forward with intent, if we don't start to design what we would like the future to look like, then our women, in particular, risk losing out. So what do I say when I mean that we want to build a future-ready workforce? I believe, uh, I admit that it's somewhat of an oxymoron. Not for a second do I think that we're going to get to a point in time where we can uh, high-five each other and shout, future-ready, yep, we've absolutely nailed that. But I believe we can focus on engaging the people that work for us at Oricon around becoming lifelong learners, more adept to change and more prepared for the challenges of what might come in the future. And why is this so important to us? Well, if there's one thing that's very clear to me, all the technology and innovation in the world is no good to people if we can't use it to do either a better job or to live a better life. And yet the trends that are driving change that I believe we need to watch out for are going to affect everyone, whether we're ready for them or not. And they include things like the rapid advances in technology, robotics, computing, and artificial intelligence, and in particular, the impact of automation. The onset of a more digital workplace, driven by the increasing sophistication of, te of telecommunications technologies and the rise of the importance of workplace well-being. The workplace flexibility movement and the changing modes of work. Increased focus on creating diverse workforces more reflective of at the customers or indeed society in general. And the impact of having multiple generations in the workplace with different event agendas and different values. And all that with the ongoing war on talent and employers competing in an increasingly global market for the right people to join this teams. So what might it look like? 
So regardless of the workplace or the industry, technology is impacting everything we do. Disruption from technology either gives you an edge or it can put you out of business. What goes for companies, though, can also go for people. Not every employee is equipped for disruption. In fact, the great majority of people simply don't like to change. And if you ever wanted to test just how hard it might be to take your teams on a grand major strategic business transformation journey, then you only need to try changing the brand of coffee in the tea room. There are so many opinions available around the impact, the potential impact of technology and what that could look like on the future of work. The discussion around automation in particular has extreme views. At one end, mass underemployment, under and at the other, a more utopian view of a flourishing economy with high participation rates. Admittedly, for many industries, this isn't the first time they've faced challenges like this. In engineering design, for example, only 30 years ago, all of the engineering drawings would have been done by hand. But this time it's happening at a much greater pace, and whereas in the past we've seen entire skill sets pass by the wayside, employers are beginning to realise that investing in the development of existing employees is a far easier option than simply replacing them. And this puts an onus on employees, employers to transform their workforce as part of their mitigation for digital disruption. But digital disruption and the rapid, rapid advancement of technology isn't just about automation. It's also about how we use technology to improve our workplaces and adapt them to better suit the trends we're talking about. We're seeing an entire industry develop around innovation in workplace design and how we can use technology in that regard. Everything from reducing our overhead costs associated with running a traditional office space to how an organisation might be able to better improve the individual employee experience and their well-being. It's fair to say that the collection and use of data has opened up vast opportunities to adapt the modern work workplace to suit the changing needs of the people who actually use it. <clears throat> when we talk about the impact of technology on our workplaces, the most common thing we're likely to discuss is the changes that it's made to how we communicate. The arrival of smartphones, social networking sites, chat apps and other tools has brought communication to a new level. It's become fast and instantaneous. You can send emails, text or video chat, or even video conference with colleagues through social networking apps. Using Skype for business, I can rely on a little green tick to tell me whether my husband is sitting at his computer and whether or not he's busy and he works for an entirely different organisation. The transformation of communication technology has resulted in the development of the virtual office. In the case of many office-based jobs or with meetings or workshops, you no longer need to be present at your workplace to get the job done. This then lends itself to substantial opportunities to address one of the other significant trends we're seeing, that being the growing availability of workplace flexibility. There's no doubt that flexibility at work is one of the key enablers to increasing women's participation in the workforce. The benefits of flexible workplaces are well researched, but I thought I'd share with you our Oricon story, where we, after a few false starts, were able to develop our award-winning Yes Flex program, which we introduced a few years ago. Yes, flex actually means exactly what it says. It was designed that way. Essentially, it encourages employees to create their own timetables in terms of when they start and finish work. They can work from an office, take their work home, on the road, or, or, or um, work wherever they like. What matters is the outcome that they produce, the excellence they deliver to our clients, and the support that they can give to their colleagues. It suits the unfolding way we live and work because it supports employees to become to balance the various parts of their own lives. Employees can use it to do anything from picking their kids up at school, to playing a game of golf, to working from home, or even to spending more time with their cat. And in fact, they don't even have to tell us as an organisation why they want to take, why they want to access this policy. They just can. And while this sort of flexibility was initially identified as being particularly important for women who want to progress their careers or re-enter the workforce, we found that it's equally as beneficial for everyone. And throughout many organisations, there's no doubt that it will become an increasingly important feature in attracting talent. As our population ages, many of us will take time away from the workplace to care for our loved ones. And I can personally attest that twice a week, our flexible working policy allows me to turn up at our gym and get yelled at by somebody for 45 minutes, all in the name of health and well-being. 
Flexible working programs are examples of where, with the support of technology, we can help balance what is most, we can help our people balance what is most important to them. And it's also good for companies. It helps us attract and retain top talent, helps build more diverse workforces, and helps create a workforce of the future that is agile and flexible. Flexible work arrangements can impact the community in a much broader way. At a fundamental level, if we can move away from the quite traditional nine to five work hours and have more people working remotely or traveling at different times, we could see less dramatic rush hours in our major cities and some relief of traffic congestion. Just imagine a future where there is no peak hour. As I said earlier, now more than ever, we're seeing a focus on diversity as a key metric to drive better business outcomes. And whilst there is much, much more to do, we are seeing some progress. A future workforce is certainly a diverse workforce, an inclusive workforce where everyone can thrive. I believe or I hope the business case for greater diversity is well understood and generally accepted. For Oricon, it is certainly critical as we are involved in designing the infrastructure outcomes for our communities for tomorrow. And how can we do that if we and the teams we form don't reflect the diversity of the com communities for whom we are providing these solutions? We see d diversity as an asset that encompasses much more than just gender, covering culture, age, LGBTI, to name a few. We have a range of initiatives focused on how we can create an inclusive environment where people can bring themselves to work and once there, reach their full potential. I've already spoken about our Yes Flex program, but to name a few others that we all also focus on, we have our Oricon attribute, Attributes, which is we've redefined the characters we, characteristics we look for when we employ people and the skill sets that they have and how we can go on and train and develop them. We have our Beyond Management Leading Inclusively People Manager Training Program that supports our line managers to get the best from their teams by embracing the unique experience that each team member brings. We have a shared care initiative that provides equal opportunity for both men and women to access parental leave and a financial incentive that supports the secondary carer, carer to take on the primary carer role at some point in the first year of the child's life. We have a strong succession planning process for the 50 most senior leadership roles in the firm, mentoring programs for our high potential women and targets with teeth across all levels of our business. And we're also quite proudly a Wajia Pay Equity Ambassador. And in this we conduct annual like for like pay gap analysis. We're serious about diversity. We believe we simply must build greater diversity in our organisation and in our wider industry in order to do what we want to do well. And further to that, if you're employing today, then you're going to be dealing with many generations in the one place. We need to begin to get to grips with the challenges of understanding and somehow weaving together the needs of the baby boomers, Gen Xs, millennials and Gen Z, while still maintaining a strong underlying business culture aligned to the cause and values of various organisations. And whether you believe that these groups are fundamentally different at a generational level or just a representation of different priorities at any given point in time, one thing is true. To get the most out of them, you'll need to engage them by working out what is important to them and asking yourself if you can provide it. And we shouldn't think that this is a passing trend either. A multi-generational workforce is here to stay. We'll see five generations in our work workplace from here on in. I've got a five-year-old at home and I can't even imagine what his generation is going to expect from their employers. They've been born into a completely different world and their priorities and expectations of work are no doubt going to reflect that. So as generations enter the workforce, they'll bring with them a diverse range of skills, experiences and expectations that if we can harness correctly can add immense value to any organisation. So I've shared with you a few of the trends that I'm sure you're all seeing in your own workplaces as well. And I believe if we can harness these trends and get ahead of the change curve, we really can dictate our own future reality. Create a workplace where each and every individual can reach their full potential. A workplace where women aren't left behind, and in fact, a workplace where no one is left behind. And that is what the challenge of our Future Ready initiative is really all about. Nurturing our people and developing them to take our place, leading our organisations through the next wave of disruption and change, because that is almost impossible to predict, to look out and see what's way ahead on the horizon. 
As we look at these trends and the impact they have on how we work, the real focus of strategy must be how we get the best out of our people in this challenging and complex world. If we find the best talent and provide them the best environment enabled by technology, we'll go much of the way there. But in the end, we must look at our talent as a group of humans, real people, and then ask themselves, what do we want their experience to be whilst working for us? Adaptability to our workplace and the individuals within it is essential for navigating the challenges that might lie ahead. Empowering our people to be willing and able to fulfil this requirement can only be achieved if we constantly put our people at the centre of everything we do. And on that note, I'll finish and perhaps leave one of my favourite quotes by Warren Bennis, an American leadership and organisational consultant. There are two ways of being creative. One can sing and dance, or one can create an environment in which singers and dancers can flourish. And as you think about the future of work and what it might hold for you, think about this quote. Get this right, and you'll have a thriving workplace of the future. And you'll find that much of what you do won't just be good for women. It will be beneficial to all of your people, both now and into the future. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you.